hearty good morning to all from my english reader course book i'll explain a lesson for you today so turn page number 90 in the page number 90 we have lesson 7 the story of kish the story of kish is a story of a huntsman's son and his struggle to prove himself as a good hunter it is authorized by jack london in the story kish is 13 years old boy who is the son of huntsman in a tribal community at the beginning he is a young boy who is innocent but at the end of the story he becomes a brave man who is respected by the others now let us talk about the characters there are seven characters in the story first kish who is the son of bok second bok who is the father of kish third aikiga who is the mother of kish and wife of bok fourth kloshkwan who is the village chief fifth aglu who is an elderly man sixth masik who is an another elderly man seventh bone and beam who are the spies after getting the characters of the lesson let us lay the foundation of the story and start the lesson all right in a village of tribal community on the border of the polar sea there lived a man named kish okay long ago when he lived he was honored and respected by his people later when he passed the old men remembered his name his name and the tale which they got from the old people were passed from one generation to the other today we would come to know that how kish from the poorest igloo in the village rose to power and place over them all okay kish was a bright young boy and very brave like his father bok in a time of famine bok was engaged in a close fight without any weapon with a great polar bear in spite of crush he killed the great polar bear bravely he got his name entered with golden letters in the list of bravery after his death his son kish followed the footsteps of his father but now at present it was very difficult for kish and his mother aikiga they had the miserable life why because kish was small and his mother had no idea of hunting okay both of them lived in the meanest of all the igloos now what happened as the days passed kish grew older the blood of his father was running through his veins later one night there was a meeting at a council in the big igloo of kloshkwan okay a young boy of 13 like kish was not allowed to participate among the elders kish braveness moved him towards the meeting and nobody dared to stop him when kish went to the meeting to express his thoughts on the fair sharing of hunted meat the elders in the meeting questioned and laughed at him not only this the expert hunters and the gray beards were aghast they had not seen a child that talked like a grown man kish challenged a blue and masik i shall go and hunt and the share of that which i kill shall be fair now no widow nor weak shall cry at night i the son of bok declares this then straight away he went back to his small igloo okay next day he carried his bow with a supply of bone barbed arrows and his father's big hunting spear behind this event the people laughed and mocked there was much noise and talk among the people okay then early next morning kish entered the village walking with long steps he bore a fresh killed meat on his shoulders 
He told the people to go with dogs and sledges and take a trail. Why? Because there was much meat on the ice of a sea bear and two half grown cubs. Then he reached his igloo and ate the flesh which he had brought. After enjoying the flesh, he slept for 20 hours. Thus began the mystery of Kish. Welcome back to the lesson, the story of Kish. Now, his next two trips were followed by killing a young bear and a large male bear and his mate. He hunted in a mysterious way. Next, whatever the division of the meat was there, it was just. He earned his merit as a hunter. Not only this, he gave the share of the meat to the people without any discrimination. So, he was looked upon with respect. There was a talk of making him chief after old Kroshkwan. He announced the people to build a large igloo for him and they did so. You know, the matter of Kish marvelous hunting spread all over the village. It knocked the ears of the council members too. One day, Aglu taxed him with witchcraft on his face. So, on the next trip, Bone and Beam, the two spies, were sent after Kish to keep eyes on him. Okay? Several days later, they were back to the village. But before Kish arrival, the two spies came running and told the tale of Kish and the bear. Beam said that the first day, Kish picked up with a great he bear. Kish went near the bear and shouted harsh words so that the bear would be fired. In an anger, the bear started chasing Kish. But as he ran, he dropped little round balls on the ice. The bear stopped and smelled them, then swallowed them up. This trick was carried on until the bear cried aloud in pain. Like this, the bear grew weak and tired. By this time, the bear was quite sick and could not crawl. This was the point when Kish came closer and speared the bear to death. That day, at noon, when Kish arrived, he was called to the council. But he told that he was hungry and tired and his igloo is large enough to hold many men. So, the whole council rose up and went to the igloo of Kish. For the hunting skills, how did you use your witchcraft? This question was asked to him. Hearing the question, Kish smiled and declared, I have used my headcraft, not the witchcraft. He explained the experiment done by him on the bear. Aglu said, Oh! And Kloshkwan said, Ah! So, due to his headcraft, Kish was made the headman of his village through all the years that he lived. His tribe was prosperous and no one slept empty stomach any night. This was the story of Kish. From this story, we came to know that we must appreciate the sacrifice of a person, no matter who is he or she. So students, till then, keep on learning. Take care. Thank you.